Hey, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be setting up the Ubiquity Light Access Point uh, with GPS. This is from their UISP line, and this is going to be a sector antenna for two nano stations. So let's get started. First of all, you're going to want to plug in your access point and turn it on. You'll let it boot, and you're going to connect it directly to your PC or Mac. Once it's connected to your Mac, you're going to then set your IP address. That way you can connect to it. So its default IP is on the 192.168.1.x network. So you're going to change it to manually. And this is plugged in from the PoE injector on the LAN port. And the access point is getting the PoE port. So you're going to set it to 192.168.1.30. We'll say 30, and this say 255.255.255.0. And you can just set it to 1.1. .1. The router doesn't necessarily matter for what we're doing because you don't need a router for this. You're just directly connecting to the access point. So once that's done, you can wait for your access point to boot up. It'll show connected because it'll show that it's plugged into something. Then you'll log into the access point and you'll configure it. So as you can see, it's connected now. We're going to type in 192.168.1.20 and you'll see its connection is not private. You'll proceed. And now on the nano station setup, it's going to ask you some questions. So this is just for like the GPS settings as well as the radio bands it lets you use. So set it to the United States. You agree to the terms and conditions and you're going to pick a username and password. So um, in this case, I'm just going to say Beam Networks, and I'll choose a very strong password. Apparently, you have to have a very secure password, so we're going to do a very secure password, and you're going to click Save, and you'll proceed on to the setup. So it's saying Management Radio is enabled. It's going to be active for 14 minutes. That's fine. Technically, you could connect to the Management Radio to configure it. Uh, I find it quite hard to use, and it doesn't always work. So you go here um, into the settings on the left. What I would do next is you're going to find the network settings, which actually are not under here. They're under Network, and you're going to swap this to DHCP, and... It's fallback IP is fine. Uh, I would also make sure you have STP off for now. We'll turn that on later, and that's all you're going to do. You're going to save your changes, and you're going to actually get disconnected from it. So now you can move it to the other network that you're going to like leave it on. Once you do this, you'll be able to connect to the access point through your network instead of through the direct connection to the device. It'll be a lot easier. So let's switch this over. I'm going to connect my Mac to the network as well as the access point to the network separately. All right, so now that it has switched over to the other network, you're going to log into the radio on the new IP address, which mine is 172.19.88.115. We'll navigate to this and proceed to the server, and it'll prompt you for the credentials you just created. So I'm going to say Beam Networks as well as my password. Um, it's going to show you new firmware is available. I'm going to dismiss this for now because once we connect this to UISP, it'll be a lot easier to update it through there. So um, up at the top it says UNMS is not configured. We're going to turn this on by adding the key, and it says it wants correct date and time, so we'll set this real quick. We'll go to system over here on the left, um, time zone, we're going to change to your time zone, and NTP will turn on, that way it can grab um, its date and time from a time server on the internet. We'll set that, and then we'll go back up to UNMS, add key. Okay, so now that you've logged into your UISP controller, you can locally host it or you can run it on Unify's cloud, but however you do it, you just gotta log in, click the plus for a new device, and copy your UISP key. Go back to your um, radio and paste in the key there and click OK. It will now take a few seconds and it's going to adopt itself into UISP. It will show up just on the dashboard and you'll be able to add it in to your UISP setup. Okay, so now you'll see that it has added itself to UISP um, as a station and there is a firmware update available. There's two options for updates. You can schedule it or you can change it now. I'm going to schedule the update and it will automatically update during your nightly maintenance hours that you have set inside of UISP. So as you can see, it's scheduled to update tomorrow at 3 a.m which is outside of my range, so that's good. Because we have management of it now, I'm going to configure the wireless radio settings, so all these network settings are fine. I'm going to create an SSID for this. The SSID really does not matter for what we're doing, um, and I would also just give it a key. So as long as you have an SSID, a key, you should be good to go. We're going to leave the channel width at 20 or 40 megahertz, and I'm going to set this as an access point, um, and that will basically allow other devices to connect to it. The output power is fine, although if you do notice that your connection signal is too strong, I would turn your output power down. That way you can kind of change the signal and not have too much traffic going there wirelessly. Down here is just other more advanced settings that we're not going to change, and we're going to save changes. Now that you've configured your access point settings, it's broadcasting an SSID that other point-to-point -point links can join. That is all you have to do, and it's ready to connect your other stations. So I'm going to show you how to connect a station. We'll do that later. I'm going to go set up another nano station pretty much the same way, and I'll show you what you have to do to get that configured. Once you get your nano station fired up, um, and you log into the, I guess, web UI of it, You'll click Dismiss on that pop-up. You're going to go over to Network and make sure DHCP is selected. In addition to that, you have to make sure that your time zone is set and NTP is turned on. That way it can obtain a time signal. Um, you have to have that done before you add it to UISP. I'm going to fill in the SSID alongside the SSID password. Now click Save. And you want to also make sure PTP mode is off and you'll save once again. Okay, so once those um, settings save, you can click on UISP in the top, and you're going to add a key. You'll paste in your key from UISP, click OK. It's going to show up for adoption right away inside of UISP. You're going to select that you want to adopt the device, 
and you can add it to the same site that your other radios are at. Now, they don't have to be the same site since you could have a link between two sites, um, but in my case, I'm going to add both of these to the same site into UISP. I unfortunately cannot show that, but um, just know that it shows right up in the app. It shows right up in the website. You just got to click Adopt and assign it to a site. Once you do that, you'll be good to go. Everything will be ready for you to use the point-to-point -point links. You just have to make sure the SSID is the same, pass key is the same, and you'll be good to go in terms of connecting this to um, another upstream device. Um, on the UISP app, actually, it does show kind of in the center. I'll take a screenshot. In the center of the screen on the main page of the UISP app, it shows there's one unassigned device. You'll click that unassigned device, and you'll assign it, and that's kind of the adoption process. Once you sign it a site, you'll be good to go. It shows up in UISP. So as you can see right here, uh, the Nano Station AC Loco has connected with the same SSID. Um, firmware is a lot older, so we're going to update that real quick here, but um, that's kind of the process. So both of these are now in UISP. You will see the light AP at the top and the two Nano Stations down below. We're going to click update and change now. I could schedule it to update overnight, but this won't be a permanent install for a while. So I'm just going to update this now that it's ready to go. And as soon as these devices come back online for your install, they'll be ready, they'll be set up. Um, the configuration does stay upon reboot, which is amazing. I don't know why it wouldn't, but it does. That is about all for this video. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. I will see you guys in the next video.